All right, guys, so this is chapter seven. Yay. My name is Radek. I'm your TA for Economics 1 BO3. And in this video, we will be reviewing willingness to pay, consumer surplus, producer surplus, cost efficiency, and equity. So let's begin off with surpluses. Economic surplus refers to two related quantities. Consumer surplus or consumer's surplus um, is the monetary gain obtained by consumers because they're able to purchase a good for a price that is less than the highest price that they would be willing to pay. Producer surplus or producer's surplus um, is the amount that the producer benefits by selling at a market price that is higher than the least that they are willing to sell for it or receive for the good. Consumer surplus is based on consumer's willingness to pay. It is the difference between what the consumer is willing to pay and what they actually pay. Mathematically, it is the difference multiplied by the quantity of that good times half because it is the area of a triangle. So consumer surplus measures economic well-being of the consumer. It is a measure of the benefit to buyers of participating in the market. In summary, producer's surplus is based on producer's willingness to sell. It is the difference between what the producer is willing to sell a good at and what they actually receive for that good. Mathematically, it is the difference multiplied by the quantity of that good times half because, yet again, it is a triangle. So, producer surplus measures economic well-being of the producer. It is a measure of the benefit to the seller in participating in the market. Now, I keep saying the difference times uh, quantity times half, and this may be a little confusing if you haven't read the chapter yet, but we will go through a couple of examples. Now, producers and consumer surplus do not have to be equal amounts and usually aren't. And this is based on the elasticities of the supply and demand slopes. So let's move on to the silly first step towards analyzing surpluses. It is called a demand schedule. And this is a step graph of the marginal buyer's willingness to purchase a good. The key word there is the marginal buyers. So we're going to be looking at one price, then we're going to go down a little, right? So we'll start off at, let's say, $10 nobody's willing to buy it. We'll go down to $9, one person's willing to buy it. We'll go down to $8, two people are willing to buy it, and so forth. And this is sort of the simplification of the demand and supply schedules. So, at $10, there is no one willing to buy this good. There are z zero quantities being sold. At $9, there is one person willing to buy this good. At $8, there are two people willing to buy the good. And at $7, there are three people willing to buy the good. As we move incrementally lower in prices, we see more and more people willing to purchase the good. In practice, we do not use a step demand schedule, and therefore we will use the formula half base times height to find the consumer and producer surpluses in that triangle. So, here's a more realistic graph. We look at our demand curve, and at a price of 8, our consumer surplus is at a maximum price that consumers are willing to pay. $10 minus $8 times 2 times half because it is a triangle, so consumer surplus here is 16. Now, say we move to a lower price of, say, $7, we will have to move, we will have more consumer surplus. Now we have the initial area, which is in light blue and the consumer surplus there is 16, plus the consumer surplus to new consumers, so that's the pink area, additional surplus to initial consumers, and now we have the additional surplus, or additional surplus to new consumers, and that is the green area. So the pink area was the additional surplus to the initial consumer, and the green area is the consumer surplus to new consumers. So, Let's move on to market efficiency. What is the official definition of market efficiency? It is the maximum, it is the maximization of consumer and producer utility. The one thing that distorts market efficiencies are taxes, and this will be explored in the next chapter. So, market equilibrium is achieved under three conditions. Free markets allocate the supply of goods to the buyers. Free markets allocate the demand for goods to the seller who can produce them at the least cost. And thirdly, free markets produce the quantity of goods that maximize the sum of consumer and producer surplus. So this was quite a brief chapter, but in conclusion, producer surplus and consumer surplus are the tools used to evaluate free market efficiencies. 
An equilibrium outcome of supply and demand yields the maximum benefit to society. This is the case in perfectly competitive markets with no externalities, no market failures, and no distortions, such as tax. The next step will be to throw taxes into the mix and see how surplus is affected and measure, and measure losses of surplus in society due to these distortions, also known as the dead weight losses. So this was a really quick run-through of Chapter 7. My name is Radek, and I hope this was helpful. See you in Chapter 8.